Hi, this is Steve Watt with Zookin USA. Today we're going to talk a little bit about CR8000 Design Force and some of the DRC options that are available. In the Home tab, we've got these options for Technology Editor, Rule Editor, Constraint Browser, and that's kind of where we'll start out. If we go and look at Rule Editor, basically the Rule Editor gives us information on the board configuration. Now this can come from the, the rule editor library or I have the ability to edit it here if I choose to. Um, it also gives us information on track specifications. So I can simply add or modify these track specifications or create a new track specification called new one and add that. And I can go ahead and specify my values or if I want to, I can calculate a targeted impedance. I can simply select here, populate all those fields, and calculate the track width. And if I want to, then I can apply those calculated widths to this track width stack over here. I also have the option to set minimums and maximums and so on. So I can control that there as well. With via specification, I can basically take from my library here and populate additional vias uh, that I want to be able to, to use in different stack up configurations. So I can have it set to no buried vias, in other words, you know, all through via or use buried vias or use predefined buried vias only. In other words, I want those spans predefined. So I can set that up here as well. Uh, with conductor area specifications, I can set restrictions on mesh and clearances in uh, or, or mesh and cutout uh, spacings um, with regards to template areas or copper areas. So with differential pair specification, what I can come in here and do is add a diff pair rule set. And I can specify a specific track width and track spacing. Again, I have the ability to calculate impedance if I want to, um, or I can just manually set that up to be a 0.05 track width and a 0.035 spacing, and I can populate that like so. For conductor clearances, I've got the ability to set up design rule stacks. So I can have design rule stacks that represent different values. So I've got 75 and 100 on this one. This one is 7,500, but not same net. This one is all 75 across the board in all instances. Um, I have the ability here to expand this view of this table over here. And then here I can see what those values are. Also here, I can set the distance to first corner from SMD pin or from through pin for routing. So basically, this is a jog to eliminate solder traps. And then I can specify some values for clearance uh, within a component for pin to pin and through pins. So that's all available there as well. And then here I can also set some differential pair to differential pair values or differential power pair to power ground or single net values as well. So I've got kind of this matrix of, of objects that I can control here. And then there's some other unique features like the hole and area controls for various elements. So I can control that as well. There's the capability to leverage voltages. So I can set up different clearance values from voltage to voltage. Uh, I've got via hole controls that are kind of a superset of via spacing. And parallel track, I can set parallel track uh, clearances as well as the parallelism length limit. Um, and I can do that on same layer here or on adjacent layers here. So I can set a clearance and limit length for adjacent or broadside, um, you know, that's going layer to layer. So just, you know, some of the options that are there. And I can also set placement rules for components um, and set up special matrices for different groups of components. And then there's some non-conductor rules that allows me to control some of the symbol marks and the clearances for resists and things like that. 
And then also I can add or modify my existing grids in the design here as well. So a lot of things that can be controlled here. And this is just kind of a quick look to give you an overview of what's here in the rules. And then if we push forward and open up the constraint browser, we've got some additional options. So here I'm looking at all the signals in the design. And here I can come in and I can specify a differential pair rule stack or clearance classes and same net design rule stacks and things like that. So I can start controlling. In this case, I'm looking at a diff pair. Um, if I go and look at individual nets, I've got some of the same capability for setting that up. And if I want to create a clearance class, that needs to be done from here. And that clearance class is simply here where I edit a clearance class. And right now I've got nothing set. So I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it clear one. And I'm going to create that. And so basically what I can do is I can take clear one and I can now specify that this is the rule deck I want to assign, assign to that. So I'm going to use that design rule stack. And so that's associated now. But where the power comes in is if I add another one. So if I create clear two, now I've got this additional field here of clear two. And now I've got the capability to set what happens when clear two gets close to clear one. So I've got this matrix. So right now we're looking at clear two. And we're going to go ahead and set that to the all 75. And then I can specify what happens when clear one and clear two come in contact with each other. And so I'm going to use the broader version for that. So now I'm, I've created this matrix. So now I can really start tuning how my DRCs are going to behave and, and how my objects are going to be controlled. And so now if I go back here, I've got the ability to specify which clearance class I want to use. So I can just specify that. And I can specify my uh, all 75 for this. And now this net has all these values associated with it that brings additional capability to control those objects. And again, I can do that with skew groups. Um, I can do that with uh, diff pairs. I can I have a lot of control over over how that's all going to interact. And so then if we start looking a little bit more at the back end of DRCs, so what happens when we run checks on our board and, and how can we evaluate that and how can we control it? We've got options here for that as well. So if I go into my DRC settings, I've got options here. Under non-conductor, I've got the ability to look at resists and symbol marks and metal masks and holes and other objects. So I can, you know, kind of control this behavior or toggle on and off checks that I want to execute. Under track and component, we've got clearance objects, same net objects, poor connection objects, board specification objects that kind of relate to vias and uh, uh, overlap lands. Um, we've got special vias, resist, teardrop, track width, lots of checks here. And all these checks have additional values that are associated with them or additional controls. For instance, I can say I want to put a tolerance of 0 0.0001 on this in case I get some rounding that's creating errors. Or under non-conductor for the resist, if I want to only adhere to the rule, I can use that. Or if I want to override that and use a user-defined value, I can do that as well. Once I have all these parameters set, I can save these parameters and I can reuse them at future dates. So if I'm only worried about placement checks, I can create a DRC rule setting that's only for placement checks, or I only want to look at copper, I can create one for copper. So I can create various check configurations and then re-execute those at different points in my process by importing those parameters and, and selecting the appropriate one. You know, we've got the check field here that kind of drives, yes, this is going to be checked. We've got this log field that's going to drive whether or not that shows up in our history report 
Um, and then we've got these view options that are basically controlled to how we're going to see those checks. So if I close that and I bring up the DRC, I can execute against the entire design. And it takes a couple of seconds to run that. And I get the message down here that DRC errors have occurred. Now I've got a couple of options in how I review those. I can go to the error mark list and just kind of quickly toggle through those various errors and see what they are. Um, I've got some controls here for, you know, how I want to act on those. Do I want to, you know, do some kind of action control? Um, but also I can use this function here for check results and it brings up kind of a, a superset of those check results and so it shows me those same errors that we were looking at before we've got the clearance errors that I was just looking into and again I can cross probe to those and when I cross probe to those I've also got some options here um, as far as options I can control what I'm viewing whether I'm viewing all errors or only errors that are unprocessed so I can toggle these controls on and off to remove objects from my list um, so I've got that control and then here I've also got send settings so I can toggle on and off what layer sets I look at when I review these errors so I can say I only want the related errors or I want all my currently visible errors or currently visible layers displayed so I've got some controls there and I've also got controls here for cross probe settings. In my case, I've got it set to 100% um, and I want to just uh, adjust the view. So I want to bring those into this center point and zoom in. Um, so, you know, just some additional options that control how that behaves. And again, when I select those, it's going to it's going to toggle to those. And also, again, I've got the ability to uh, perform an action on those or create a, a query. I want to make a comment here and I want to say, please review. And that's basically something that I can create in this file um, and, and it gets stored with the design. Uh, but I've also got the ability to export that as well. I can send this, I can export this out to Excel if I, if I so choose or create a CSV of this as well. Um, so I've got additional options there uh, for sharing this data. So that's just kind of a quick overview of DRC and Design Force to give you an idea of, of how those checks work and how they can be controlled um, and where those control sets are established. Thanks for your time.